Hello and welcome to Nunley Math. I am your host, Aaron Nunley. I want to thank you so much for uh, being with us here today. We're actually starting a brand new unit in my class at school. I'm very excited to be moving on from application problems. Um, it's nice in algebra sometimes to get a change of pace every once in a while. Uh, we started the year with uh, solving equations, and, and after a while that can become a little bit routine and mundane. So we moved on to, to looking at how we can apply those to real life situa situations and scenarios. Um, but that's, that's a pretty tedious and taxing process. It's very, very involved. Um, it requires a lot of a lot of thinking and reading and, and, and interpretation of information. Um, so it's nice sometimes to to shift back the other direction just a little bit and look at things that are a little bit more procedural for just a little while. Um, this next unit is on inequalities and their graphs. You should be fairly familiar with inequalities prior to this lesson, this unit. So we're going to cram a lot of information into this lesson all at once um, and lay a little bit of foundational work and groundwork for or for what we have left to do with inequalities. Let's take a look at an example here of an application of inequalities. In order to ensure rider safety, it is common for amusement parks to restrict and permit guests to ride certain rides based on their height. And notice we're here on the left, I have a chart. I pulled this off the internet from jubileeentertainment.com. Uh, and it appears to be from Australia. This is a ride that has certain ride restrictions. Notice down here in the red zone, any person who is below 120 centimeters is unable to ride this ride. A person who is between 130 and 120 centimeters is tall enough to ride this ride with an adult. And if you're taller than 130 centimeters, you are tall enough to ride this ride by yourself. You see, this amusement park or this entertainment company has divided its guests into three groups. Anyone below 120 centimeters, people who are between 120 and 130, and guests who are more than 130 centimeters tall. Now, when we, ref when we talk about um, expressing these things mathematically, we like to use something known as an inequality. Inequalities are mathematical symbols that show how expressions compare when they are not equal to one another. Up until now, all our problems have involved equality symbols or equal signs, but now we have several other symbols that we can use. The greater than symbol, one item is more than another, or the greater than or equal to symbol. We have a limit where if, as long as it meets at least a certain requirement, or if it's higher than that requirement, it's acceptable. You have less than and less than or equal to. So in our story, if I talk about my guests as G, and I say guests who are below 120 centimeters tall, I can express this group of people using an inequality, guests who are less than 120 centimeters. I could do the same thing down here. Guests who are between 120 and 130 centimeters, I could express this way. 120 is less than my guest, and my guest is less than 130. Or more succinctly, my guests are between 120 and 130 centimeters tall. Lastly, guests who are more than 130 centimeters would just be G is greater than 130. Now, whenever I do this, I'm typically asked about what about those people that are exactly 120 and exactly 130? Well, if we want to get real specific about it, if this group is guests that are below 120, 120 doesn't fit in this category because 120 is not less than itself. If we talk about guests that are more than 130, 130 really doesn't fall into this category either because 130 is not greater than 130. And the way I have this written, 120 would not fit this criteria either because 120 is not, um, is not greater than 120 and less than 130. But when I read these phrases below, more than and between. The only one that really gives us any ambiguity is the between. Between can sometimes be inclusive, meaning include the 120 and the 30, which is why I've put the equal signs, or it could be exclusive, meaning leave those out. Very important for us to make sure when we're solving a problem we're clear on which between we're working with. Now this particular chart is not specific and I would imagine it's because in real life if the um, 
if the person were exactly 120, the um, the person operating the ride would probably just let it slide over. Um, but I can't say that for certain. Here's another example. Liquid water is essential for organic life. Water is in its gaseous form or steam when it's zero degrees Celsius or higher. It is a solid when it is a hundred degrees Celsius. Hmm, that gummit. Here's another example. Liquid water is essential for organic life. Water is in its gaseous form, steam, when it is 100 degrees Celsius or higher. It is a solid when it is 0 degrees Celsius or lower. This problem tells us that water can be split into three different groups based on temperature. Water is ice when its temperature is 0 degrees Celsius or lower. Water is liquid when its temperature is between 0 and 100. And water is a gas when its temperature is 100 degrees Celsius or above. If I allow T to be the temperature of the water, can we express this first statement using T and an inequality symbol? Water is ice when its temperature is 0 or lower. Notice it can be below 0, but equals 0 will also give you ice. So we include that there. Water is a liquid when its temperature is between 0 and 100. Here I'm using my between language. And water is steam when its temperature is 100 degrees or above. Notice it can be exactly 100, that's the equal sign, or it can be more than 100. That's why we use the greater than sign. Also notice, since equals was included for equals 0 and equals 100, I did not include equals here. Now, there are an infinite number of temperatures that meet these criteria. This could be 1 degree, 2 degree, 3 degree, 4 degree, 7.5 degrees, 8.37 degrees. There's an infinite number of possible choices here, just like there's an infinite number of possible choices here. 100 degrees, 105 degrees, 107 degrees, 107.38 degrees. I cannot possibly list every single possible value that works. So in order to express these, we use what we call a number line. Let's take a look at this first example. T is less than or equal to zero. The number line gives a continuum of values in order, with the least values being over here on the left, and the greatest values or highest values being over here on the right. If my temperature can be less than or equal to zero degrees, or when my temperature is less than or equal to zero degrees, it's ice. That's going to be all these values down here, negative one degree, negative two degrees, negative three degrees. All of these values meet that criteria. Does zero meet this criteria? It does. So I'm going to make sure that I put a dot at the end of that line. Notice zero is the highest temperature that meets this criteria and it goes to the left forever and ever infinitely on and on. I can do the same thing for steam. Temperatures greater than or equal to 100. 100 is here. Everything greater than 100 is to the right. So I have an arrow. Notice that 100 is included. So I make sure I put a dot there so it's easy to know that. The last example is temperatures that are between 0 and 100. That would be this group in here. 1 is greater than 0 but less than 100. 30 is greater than 0 but less than 100. Every value along this purple line is greater than 0 but also less than 100. The only thing we have to be careful about is this. If it's exactly 0, it is not going to be liquid water. We've already said exactly 0 is going to be ice. So at this point right here at 0 degrees, and again over here at the 100 degrees. 100 degrees is steam, not liquid water. In both those places, I'm going to put open circles. We use open circles because that tells us to go all the way up to that temperature, but not including that temperature. All the way up to that temperature, but not including that temperature. 
Now, most neighborhoods restrict drivers to speeds that are at most 25 miles per hour. What would that look like as an inequality or as a graph? The speeds are at most 25 miles per hour. How would you write that? How about this? The speed must be less than or equal to 25. Notice this phrase says at most. This says 25 is the most it can be, so we include the 25. Now, a lot of people, when they see the word most, they think bigger, but at most means this much or smaller. Can you graph that on your own? Notice 25 is halfway between 25 and 30, and it's going to be everything to the left. 25 is included, so I put the dot. Let's come over here to the right. Most officers will issue a ticket to drivers for speeds that are 30 miles per hour or more. Give this as an inequality and a graph. Can you express that? How about S is greater than or equal to 30? 30 or more means include the 30 or anything higher than 30. Starting at 30, we go to the right. Since the 30 is included, we put a dot. Lastly, most officers will issue a warning to drivers traveling more than 25 but less than 30. Give this as an inequality and a graph. I'd suggest pausing your video to try this one. The speed is more than 25 but less than 35 miles per hour. What's that going to look like? 25 is less than the speed in this category, which is less than 30. If you are exactly 25, the speed limit says you're okay. If you're exactly 30, the problem says you are going to get a ticket. But this area in between, not including 25 and 30, well, that's right here. And I put open circles to ensure that we realize 25 and 30 are not included. I'd suggest taking just a second and pausing the video to try this set of problems. Notice that I've used n and 5 in every problem, but um, I, I've changed the, uh, the symbols around. See if you can figure out whether to use open or closed circles and which way your arrow goes. I'm going to assume you've already restarted the video after pausing, and I'm going to do this with you. Numbers greater than 5 are here. 5 is left out because 5 is not greater than 5. Over here on the right, this is numbers less than 5. Well, 5 is here. All the numbers this direction would be included, but 5 is not less than 5. This says numbers greater than or equal to 5. Here's everything greater than 5, but 5 is included because 5 is equal to 5. Last one, numbers less than or equal to 5, those are less than 5. 5 is included because 5 does equal 5. Anytime you have the equal sign, your dot gets colored in. Anytime it's just greater than or less than, your dot stays open. Over on the left side, take just a second and see if you can graph these. I'd suggest pausing your video to do that and then restarting when you're ready to see if you're right. Y is less than negative 3. There's things that are less than negative 3. It's an open circle, so we know that negative 3 is not less than itself. When I see 2 is less than or equal to X, to me, it's easier to read this with the X on the other side. If 2 is smaller than X, that tells me that X is greater than 2. Notice we have an equal sign as well. Here's the things that are greater than 2. There's the 2 itself. How about x is greater than 0? There's the things that are greater than 0. 0 is not greater than itself. I put this last one on here just so I could talk about it very, very quickly. This is something we call function notation. Notice it says every x as long as 
x is less than or equal to negative 4. I'm introducing this, this um, way of writing things because functions is our next unit and it's going to be important when we get there. For our purposes now, all we need to keep in mind is that we're just saying that every x will work as long as it meets this criteria. So that's really all we're going to be looking at at the moment. x less than or equal to negative 4. There's the things less than negative 4. I color it in because it's equal to. Knowing that, we should be able to look at pictures like this, ride A and ride B, which are ride restrictions at a music park, and we should be able to take the inequalities graph, and we should be able to write the inequality based on that graph. If you think you can do that, pause the video, try it, and then turn it back on and see if you're right. If you're not sure, let's do this together. Notice, I need things that are bigger than 48. That's things to the right. But 48 is also included. I want ride A to be everyone greater than or equal to 48. Ride B wants things that are smaller or people that are smaller than 52. But notice we are not including the 52. 52 does not fit into this group. B is less than 52. A couple of things you need to be able to do. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you will be given English expressions that you will have to translate into inequalities, just like we did translating in our last unit on problem solving. We do this the exact same way. It says a number w minus 3.5. And here's an expression I want to make sure I point out to you. Is less than or equal to. That's this symbol right here, less than or equal to negative 2. I make a big deal about this because in our last chapter, or in our last unit, the word less than meant subtract. It meant subtract. But notice in this case, in this problem, we're not given less than. We're attaching it to that verb is. Whenever less than is connected to a verb like is, it's no longer subtraction, but it's now an inequality symbol. You remember in our last unit we said verbs are always um, equality signs. How about this next one? Can you do that on your own? Pause the video. When you're ready, go ahead and restart. 3 is less than, is less than a number n plus 5. Notice, is less than, ordinarily when we had less than, that was subtraction, you attach it to the word is, and now it becomes the inequality symbol. Notice they told us to use n. If they tell us what letter to use, we have to use the letter they give us. One more. Zero is at least, ooh, there's a little typo for you, is at least, what does that mean, is at least? Is at least means this much or more. That's greater than twice the number x plus 1. There you go. One final thought for you. Um, sometimes you will be asked to test or tell whether a particular number is a solution of the inequality. Remember, solutions are things that make it true. If I put a 4 in for x, is this statement true? Well, that's easy enough. We've done that before. In order to do a check to see if something's true or if something works, we always rewrite the original problem, plug in the value we're testing, and simplify. If what's left is true, we know it's correct. If what's left is false, we know the answer is not a solution. There's one at the bottom. Why don't you try that on your own and then restart the video. We rewrite, substitute, simplify this one does in fact work here again I went through that pretty quickly today most of this should be familiar to you I'm just trying to make sure um, it's fresh in our memory 
and then if you have not seen it before, just kind of give you a brief introduction. We'll do a lot more complicated things with this as time progresses. Um, once again, thank you so much for joining us. If this was useful to you, please leave me a comment in the comment section. If there's something um, I can do to make these better, feel free to leave me that information as well. Make sure you like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you can learn Algebra 1 along with us. As always, I do appreciate your, uh, your attention so much. Best of luck to all of you guys. Take care.